Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Coffee with Craig, where we talk about all things firearms, firearms policy, politics, culture, media, you name it. We're talking about it right here on Coffee with Craig. So take a moment, like and share the program. Tell your friends about it. Whether you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook, uh, please remember, go to Facebook, follow us on Facebook, as well as subscribe to us on YouTube. Help us get our numbers up uh, so that we can uh, do more to bring more of this uh, to you guys. Also, uh, if you just want to listen to us, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, you name it, tons of different ways in which you can just listen to the program. Uh, so please make it a, a point to avail yourself uh, of those opportunities, as well as encourage others to do the same. Also, would like to encourage you to go to fpcgear.com fpcgear.com. It's a great place to go. Once again, we're always adding new stuff, new t-shirts, new coffee mugs, new hoodies, all stuff that uh, helps you to show your support for the Second Amendment. The great part about it is every penny that you spend will go right back into the fight for our right to keep and bear arms. So you can support the Second Amendment and you can look good doing it. That's fpcgear.com. All right. Um, it's a, it's that time of year. It's January. Things are heating up. Uh, not only is there a ton of legislation that's going on in various different states all across the country, which I've already been talking to you guys about, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about, there's also the matter of uh, the confirmation of uh, the new or new, soon-to-be new attorney general. Uh, right now, uh, you guys have had a chance over the last couple of weeks, I'm sure you guys have watched all the videos uh, relating to uh, the current nominee, Mr. William Barr. Now, Mr. William Barr, this is not his first rodeo as attorney general, his first time around. Uh, the sad part about this particular thing is, is that this is a, a, a nomination uh, of an individual who, for whatever reason, the president has decided that uh, he wants to nominate someone to, to attorney general that is anti-gun, anti-Second Amendment. And this is, this is an important thing, because keep in mind, this is the department that oversees, uh, that oversees the ATF. Right. This is the department that oversees uh, major federal cr uh, criminal uh, criminal prosecutions, and so this is an individual who, above anything, is their their primary job is to defend our constitutional rights. And so, when you have an individual who believes that uh, our constitutional rights uh, are suspect, and for those of you who wonder whether or not he believes they're suspect, well, let, let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, let's start just with, I think, the most obvious thing. And I think the most one of the most recent, one of the most obvious things that he has stated uh, has been his support of red flag laws, or he calls them ERPOs, EPROs, extreme risk, or ERPOs, extreme risk protection orders, uh, where he basically believes uh, that, uh, well, in essence, once again, he believes that, well, hey, these, these are a good thing, right? There's, there's no problem with these things here. Check it out. I think that the problem of our time is to get an effective system in place that can keep dangerous firearms out of the hands of mentally ill people. That is, should be priority number one. And it's going to take some hard work. And we need to get on top of the problem. We need to come up with agreed to standards that are prohibitors of people who are mentally ill. We have to put the resources in to get the system built up the way we did many years ago on the, on the uh, felon records and so forth. We, we have to get the system working. And it, as I say, it, it's, it's uh, sort of piecemeal a little bit right now. We need to really get some energy behind it and get it done. And I also think we need to uh, push along the, the ERPOs uh, so that we have these red flag laws uh, to, to uh, supplement uh, the use of the background check to find out if someone has some mental <coughs> disturbance. This is the single most important thing I think we can do uh, in, in the gun control area to uh, stop these massacres from happening in the first place. Okay, now understand this. He said the single most important thing that we can do is make sure that uh, that uh, individuals can go to the courts and demand that your rights be taken away, that your right to keep and bear arms be taken away. Uh, no due process because you know you didn't you don't get to go before the judge. You don't get a chance to be there. You don't get a chance to tell your side of the story. Uh, but basically, that with no due process, you lose your right to keep and bear arms. That is the most important thing that William Barr thinks sh should happen. 
in gun control. Because, once again, he is an advocate of gun control. Because, you know, he kind of sees it as a right. But, you know, in his eyes, it's, it's, it's a right, but it's not really a right right. Okay, now, he has said he believes in the, the individual right to own a firearm. Or he starts off saying a weapon, and then he says a firearm. Uh, but, you know, he, does he really believe it, it's a right? I mean, if it were truly a right, is this the standard that you would uh, have when you decide whether or not you are going to infringe on that right? Uh, and so there's no question under Heller that uh, the right to, to have weapons is um, firearms are, uh, is protected under the Second Amendment and is, an, and is a personal right. At the same time, there's room for reasonable regulation. And, you know, from my standpoint, what I would look for is, in assessing a regulation, is what's the burden on law-abiding people, uh, and is it proportionate to uh, whatever uh, benefit in terms of uh, safety and effectiveness will be conferred? So... In other words, yeah, we can violate your rights if we believe that, uh, well, we, if we can state that we believe that there is a benefit to that, right? If we believe that the benefit outweighs your rights. So if we believe there's a benefit to restricting your right to due process, because that's what extremist protection orders are. It's an infringement on your right to due process, but, they, but he believes that if there's a a community enough or if there's a big enough benefit or if I can make any benefit, if I can state that there's any benefit to it, well then, you know, hey, we ought to be able to restrict your individual, your individual right to due process doesn't mean anything. Or your individual right to private property doesn't mean anything. Your right to free speech doesn't mean anything if we can deem that infringing upon your right provides a greater benefit than allowing you to exercise your right. Well, folks, those are not rights. Rights, first and foremost, are individual. The, the Bill of Rights is largely about restricting the control, the control of the government. That's what it's really about. Keeping them from infringing upon the individual rights and liberty, the liberties of individuals. But to him, if there's a bigger benefit, well, then, heck, then that really doesn't matter then, does it? Well, I wish I could say that this is a new thing for Mr. Barr, because clearly the idea that the Second Amendment is a second-class right is not new to him, because one only need go back and look at uh, his, uh, his, uh, nom his uh, uh, confirmation hearing uh, in the 1990s uh, for Attorney General to hear that, yeah, no, to him, once again, the Second Amendment, it may be a right, but it ain't a right right. On the assault weapon front, um, the proposal before us is the De Concini, uh Amendment. And I think, uh, I don't know if this is a new statement or not, but, but I would support uh, both the Brady Bill waiting period and the De Concini Amendment, provided they were uh, parts of a broader and more comprehensive crime bill that included uh, tough enforcement provisions, including very tough provisions on the use of firearms and crimes and illegal purchase and trading in, in firearms, which are part of the package that passed the Senate. Um, now, to be candid, on the waiting period, uh, I would prefer uh, an approach that was directed toward point of sale. And uh, I know that uh, we're not at that point yet technologically. It's going to require more investment. And, and I've been involved in infusing those resources here to upgrade the records. But the important thing, I think, ultimately will be a system that's, that's based on state records, a state system. Uh, and uh, so I think the House approach is preferable, frankly, to the Senate approach. Uh, on the... Um, the Concini Amendment, I would prefer a limitation on the clip size, but ultimately uh, I would recommend the President sign a bill that had the Brady waiting period and the De Concini uh, assault weapons provisions in it, uh, as long as we had other uh, tough uh, crime measures in it that dealt with the other problems. Um, and um, I have not considered before uh, whether the waiting period should apply to uh, 
assault weapons, but uh, uh, and want to think about that. But uh, off the top of my head, I don't uh, think there should be an objection to that. Okay, so let's be clear. What he's talking about here is, is a few things. Number one, he believes he supports the idea of not just background checks and expanding background checks. This was 1991. So expanded background checks, which he's already said he, he supports expanded background checks even, you know, even this year. But he also exports, it supports expanding it to include long guns, right? In, in that particular case, that's what he's talking about there. But he's talking about also about a waiting period. I'm sorry, a waiting period for long guns. Uh, so including a waiting period. Oh, and did I forget to mention the magazine? He, was talking, he talked about a clip. So now he believe, he wants, he, in, or in this particular case, he supports the idea of banning standard capacity magazines. That's another thing that, that's there that he supported. And oh, by the way, you guys kept hearing about the Deconcini Amendment. Yeah, that would have banned all semi-automatic long guns. So he supported a firearm ban, uh, universal background checks, uh, waiting periods, um, and once again, a, a, a firearm ban, a, 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 a magazine ban. This is the guy that Donald Trump is nominated to be the attorney general. And I know a lot of you out there are like, oh, man, I know you got a lot of you guys out there didn't like Jeff Sessions. But Jeff Sessions is, I mean, <laughs> he's worlds better than this guy when it comes to the Second Amendment. I mean, we're talking worlds better. And unfortunately, this is the guy that Donald Trump has, chose, has chosen to nominate. I don't know who he was listening to when he picked this guy, uh, but, but I, I just have to say that I've, I've got to believe that there are members, uh, that there are people out there who have contributed to him, who supported him, who are turning around and telling him, what the hell are you doing? Because this guy is not set pro-Second Amendment. You promised us, Mr. President, that you were going to be the most pro-Second Amendment uh, president ever. And so far... Other than, uh, you know, you have given us two Supreme Court justices, but this guy's a dud. This guy's a serious dud. And quite frankly, you haven't done much else for the Second Amendment. So now we have to, you know, now we have to oppose, unfortunately, your nominee. So we need you guys. Look, this guy he cannot or should not be not, should not be confirmed. So please take a moment, follow the link in the description of this video. Uh, let uh, your senator, let senators know that this guy should not be confirmed. So, you know, Republicans are the majority, are the majority in the Senate. So you have to figure most, if not all, the Democrats are going to vote against him. So if they're going to vote against him, uh, you got to figure it's, you know, knows how many, how many Republicans it would take to actually make sure he does not get confirmed. So do it, do it now. Let's put the fight up now and let's tell the president, put up someone who actually believes in civil rights, someone who actually believes in the Constitution, someone who actually believes in the Second Amendment when it says the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And by the way, Mr. Barr, that means it shall not be infringed by you. Anyway, folks, that's going to be it for today's Coffee with Craig. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for liking and sharing this program, telling your friends about the Farms Policy Coalition. We are the home in the fight for civil rights. Got to use them or you're going to lose them. You guys take care. If you like our videos, follow, subscribe, like, and share.